Right now, there's a technological revolution unfolding that the majority of people don't realize is happening. Even though this technology is relatively unknown, it will change our lives in the near future. I'm talking about blockchain and its promise to power the future of our online society. Today, I want to help you understand what blockchain is and then take you through a story to show how blockchain will be used directly in our lives as college students. So the dictionary definition of a blockchain is a distributed ledger technology. But this sounds like a lot of tech mumbo jumbo. So let's see if there's a better way to figure out what this means. Whenever you make a transaction using your debit card, your bank is the sole entity in charge of making sure you have enough money in your account to make that transaction. In fact, they have the final say over everything you do related to money, since they control the account, after all. If you make a purchase that your bank doesn't agree with, they have the power to censor your transaction. In theory, Venmo could ban your account after you send money to a friend with a memo, thanks for the Coke. You may be referencing a sugary brown drink, but Venmo may think you're referencing a powdery white substance and can permanently ban you from their platform. And though this sounds like a silly example, it has real world implications. Imagine if your payment provider only lets you donate to their preferred political party or shop at the grocery store that paid them the most. This type of censorship is unacceptable in our modern society, especially with the growing prevalence of digital transactions. And blockchain offers the solution. Unlike PayPal, Visa, or any other payment system you use today, blockchain is decentralized, which means there's no central authority controlling the network. Each person who uses the blockchain network has a say in how it is governed and helps ensure that transactions are completed. This may be hard to understand on its own, so let's use an example to help clear it up. Let's say three children have a chore sheet in their house. Each of the kids, Bob, Alice, and Sue, have chores they need to complete. Once they're complete, they're crossed off the list, mom checks the list, and each kid receives their allowance. One problem. Who do we trust to hold this list? We can't trust any of the kids, because they could claim they did their chores when they really didn't. And mom is a busy lady, so she doesn't have time to check that the chores are complete. What do we do? How about this? Instead of keeping only one list, let's keep a master list on the fridge that mom checks every night, and we'll give each child a copy of this list that they update whenever they finish one of their chores. So when Bob finishes cleaning his room, he'll cross off his list, but the other three lists won't automatically update. At the end of the day, the kids will come together and compare lists. When Alice and Sue see that Bob claims he cleaned his room, they'll both go check. And if they're satisfied that he did, they'll cross it off their lists as well. And since everyone agrees that Bob's room is cleaned, it gets crossed off the fridge list and Bob gets paid for a hard day's work. Sue tried to be sneaky and claimed she also cleaned her room when she really didn't. But in order for her to get paid, she has to get Bob and Alice to agree first. When they both go check, it still looks like a pigsty, so they refuse to cross it off their lists, and without a majority, it can't be crossed off the fridge list, so Sue's claim is invalidated. At the end of the day, once the fridge list is finalized, it can't be changed again. So this means that if Sue's feeling particularly devious, she can't claim she cleaned her room on Tuesday if it's next Thursday. This concept is called immutability and ensures that data on the blockchain is final and can never be changed. So this is an example of a simple blockchain where each member of the network, in this case the children, are in charge of verifying the legitimacy of each other's transactions. Up until now, the most prominent use case for blockchain has been in payments. In fact, this can be seen in the cryptocurrency Bitcoin, which was actually the first blockchain. However, there are nearly infinite possibilities. Anything with data or that represents value can be stored on a blockchain. Healthcare information so that hospitals are able to access patient records without having to go through tons of complicated steps? Sure. What about property titles, which would remove the need for title companies and save both home buyers and sellers time and money? Why not? Now that we know a bit about how blockchain works, let's transition to focusing in on a few examples of how blockchain will be used in higher education. And in what better way than with a story about the student of the future? Cornelius. Now, I know he doesn't look like a college student, but he skipped a couple grades, trust me. So Cornelius is a member of Vanderbilt's class of 2030. He's eager to start the semester, including the one thing that modern students hate the most, buying textbooks. Every college student's best friend is copy and paste. However, it's every college publisher's worst nightmare, as it allows for students to illegally download and share textbooks. In response, publishers have begun moving to a subscription-based model, 
which is incredibly student unfriendly. These subscriptions can cost the same price as a regular textbook, but only last a semester as opposed to forever. Blockchain offers a solution to satisfy both parties. Since books represent something of value, they can be stored on the blockchain. So when Cornelius buys his textbooks, he receives a blockchain based copy. When it's in his account, he can read it, just like any other ebook. However, at the end of the semester, he could resell it to another student and send it to their blockchain account. This makes digital textbooks offer the same ownership and resale value as physical, with all the flexibility of a digital medium. It allows students like Cornelius to truly own their digital property and let textbook publishers rest assured that their textbooks aren't circulating illegally. So with all of his textbooks on his laptop, Cornelius is ready to start the semester, except for one thing. He needs to register and get an identity within the Vanderbilt system so he can get into buildings and access online accounts. Right now, we use a system of a physical card and a centralized online platform. Though this seems like an elegant solution, there are plenty of flaws in this design. First, there's one centralized point of failure. If the servers that Vanderbilt uses goes down or experience an outage, Cornelius will be unable to enter buildings using his phone or access his online accounts. Similarly, if a hacker gets into that database, they get every single username and password associated with Vanderbilt, including Cornelius's. Blockchain solves this problem by being distributed, so there's no way for you not to have access to your information. Second, centralized systems can be expensive. How much do you think it costs, on average, to reset a forgotten password? A couple pennies? Maybe a dollar? Try $70. This means that if a mere 2,000 students forget their password and want to reset it, it costs the university, on average, $140,000. An identity system based on the blockchain could be linked to a user's phone and eliminate the need for these costly password changes. Well, we've made it to the end of the semester. Cornelius has worked hard, and he's ready to start applying for internships. Each place that he's applying to asks him for a copy of his transcript. Typically, this process can take 7 to 10 days by mail and cost upwards of $10 per transcript depending on the university. Blockchain solves this problem in an incredibly simple and intuitive manner. Just like textbooks, transcripts represent something of value and thus can be stored on the blockchain. If universities issued transcripts on the blockchain, students would be able to quickly and easily send them to prospective employers without there being any worry of forgery. Just like transcripts, diplomas can also be issued on the blockchain. In fact, this has been trial run at MIT and is being used at nearly 100 universities around the world, and it offers numerous benefits over the traditional method of going through the registrar and paying a fee. First, the diploma is always valid. Even if the university shuts down and you can no longer order a traditional diploma, you still have your blockchain diploma, and it is provably legitimate due to the immutability of the blockchain. Second, they're tamper-proof. While a typical PDF of a diploma could be doctored, the blockchain version cannot, once again due to its immutability. If it was tampered with, an employer would be able to see this change compared to the original, and know to definitely not hire this prospective employee. Fake diplomas are a billion dollar industry, and they could be affecting you directly. Your doctor or nurse may have never gone to school, or the architect constructing your home may be winging it. Blockchain solves this problem and both increases efficiency and prevents fraud altogether. To wrap things up, through following Cornelius through his college experience, we've seen how blockchain will revolutionize higher education. The best part about this fictional story is that it will one day be fact for millions of college students, and billions of people around the world will be using blockchain in their everyday lives. It will strengthen our society, solve complex problems, and create a better digital world for all of us. Thank you.